guys and welcome to episode four of instill of mother and guess what y'all we have our first official instill of mother guest i'm gonna go ahead and let her introduce herself y'all because if i gotta introduce her i'm gonna say a whole bunch a whole bunch of because she 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 that girl go ahead hey. yes okay y'all <laughs> i am anika simone a lot of you know me as ashley joins i'm the host of swim the podcast owner of grounded essentials llc uh, the tarot lady, as many of you know me as, I do do readings. Um, yeah, I'm a mom, amongst other things. Yeah, um, that's surface level. So. Mm -hmm, very surface <laughs> level. <laughs> um, so as y'all know, our first segment is Sweet and Sour. Now, I do want to say that we don't have any specific topics that we're going to talk about. We just going to talk, y'all, because let me tell you, our conversations, we... We really we do. Not, yes, we be talking. We do not have surface level. I mean, you know, we'll be like, how was your day? Most of our conversations are not surface level. At all. We just be talking and talking and talking. But I'm going to go ahead and start. Do you want to start or you want me to start? With my sweet and sour. Start. Okay. So actually, okay, my sour, I'm going to start with my sour. So this week I've been really like emotional. And I feel like I've been emotional because you know how you already know something, but then it's like, like, you know it, but or it's like a revelation come to you. Mm -hmm. Like that shit really hit. Like it's hitting. Like, for real? <laughs> for real? So I feel like my, I really been kind of emotional just thinking about the fact of that. Um, I can't like put the blame on anybody else for where my life is not going or the current situation of where I want it to go. I only could put it to blame on me. So that is in that, even though people probably be like, well, duh, but when you really have to that accept the fact, yes, <laughs> when you have to accept the fact that you are the reason why you're in the, the situation you in, it's not a good feeling. <laughs> Crying real tears. So, yeah. So, okay. <laughs> real tears. <laughs> um, but on the flip side, as far as my sweet, my sweet has to be the same thing because I'm so glad that I'm coming to that realization because that also makes me realize that being that I am the only reason why I'm in a situation I'm in, I'm the only person that can get myself out. Okay. I don't have to depend on nobody else to get myself out. And she coming up out, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my sweet and sour for the week. What about you? Okay. So my sour is so sour that I really can't go into depth of the story, but just know that I was tested this week as far as me sinking or swimming. Mm -hmm. And, um, I swam, of course, of course I swam, but it was, I haven't been in a position like that in a very long time. And I really felt uncomfortable. I had anxiety all week. I ain't gonna lie to you. I know you may have noticed my communication was a little <laughs> off. Some days I was up, some days I was down, but you know, ultimately I made a really good decision for myself yeah. this week. And, um, it was sour because I felt like I let somebody down. You know, really? but yeah, and I don't like to be let down, so it hurts to do it to other people. Yeah. But I had to do what was best for me. The sweets. Yeah, with me making your drink <laughs> and noticing that it says sink or swim on it. Mind you, I made that glass for the retreat. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the name of my workbook. I didn't ever think. I never, I didn't remember I made the glass. Yeah. So to see it, I was like, sink or swim? Like, oh my God, I manifested that shit. Like, I manifested that before the retreat mm -hmm. even happened. So it was nice to see it just... It was nice. And with that being the name of your workbook. Yes. Yes. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Go ahead, girl. Sink or Swim, a self-care workbook and journal, y'all. You can find it at groundedessentialsllc.com. Yvette has hers yes, for her I birthday do. gift, honey. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I encourage everybody. Listen, y'all. I'm going I'm telling y'all, not I'm not I don't just say the things that I say just because she's my friend. I'm glad that she's my friend and I'm glad that I could say this, these things about somebody and I really mean it. Y'all really need a shot with her and just, I just love you so much. I love you too, girl. I really do. I, I'm so proud of you because when I be sitting here thinking like, I be like, Ashley is really on her shit. Like she got products, a workbook and you just inspired me so much. Oh, so, um, I got a surprise too what? because I'm proud of you. <laughs> And I know you love my products. Yes. So I bought you something. Your whipped body ah, butter that you love. You <laughs> Listen, the video I just uploaded today, if y'all haven't watched that video, go watch that video. I featured your products oh. in there. 
Yes, I've been running around at work, y'all. So <laughs> thank you. If you can see my jar, you gonna when you watch that video, I know you're gonna watch I'm it. Gonna cry. You're gonna see my jar. Girl, <laughs> I said that I'm gonna get a q tip and get all every last bit out. Because not my- a q tip. Thank you, girl. Thank you're welcome. You. You're welcome. I just wanna give a background of how me and Ashley met. So I've known Ashley for I don't need, I can't even tell you how many years now. Shoot. But it's I've known her for quite a while, but I've known her through a mutual friend. And I feel like um it's crazy how when you start, when I first met her or when I knew her back then, I was nowhere near the person that I am today. Like I wasn't into, you know, I spiritual knowledge. Yeah, I wasn't into <laughs> none of that. So it's like, I feel like with me being on, people might think like, oh, ever since that her and Ashley got close, she all into spirituality, but it's really not. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not, it was more so of like, I needed you. And I feel like that you Aww. you were the friendship came right at the right time because I needed to be um led and somebody that understood. You know? And very much so I needed you because I needed someone to remind me of how far I did come because sometimes mm-hmm. I would be thinking like, Ashley, you you not who you think you are, girl. How you do you really think you all of that? And I'm like, you know what, I'm I'm influencing other people. Yes, yeah. yes you are. Like you wake up every day and you go do the things that you say you are. Yes, that's what you are, yeah. Ashley. So, thank you. I needed you, too. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Well, I'm glad I could be there for you, girl. Because, honestly, a lot of the times I just be like, I feel like I come to you so much. And I, you give me so much of insight. And I'm like, anytime she's going through something, I be like... <laughs> I don't know what to say because you always give me insight. So all I be wanting is an ear and she be the ear. <laughs> the thing is, I be needing somebody to kind of feed that information to because that's mm-hmm. my service that I'm giving to the world. You know, yeah. if I'm not giving to other people, what am I doing? Yeah. You know, so yeah. thank you for allowing me to give to you. Yes. I, I, I'm, I'll be there to listen. But sometimes I'll be like, I don't know what to say because she already know. Like, oh. you know? <laughs> but honestly, I feel like we all already be knowing. We just got to remember. Yeah. And sometimes one thing I will say that I love about our friendship is that none of our conversations really it's not revolved around gossip or anything like that. Like we don't, it's not talking about, and and it's crazy because that's something that I, I never thought that you could have that in a friendship. I always thought that you had to, you like, when we have conversations, we talking about, I'm not going to say negativity. Well, in a way it is negative. Yeah. Or just other people's business yeah. or, you know, just things that are not for the best of right. neither one of y'all. And we don't talk about so. that. Like, like you we know. We have high vibrational conversations. Yes, y'all. we do. Mm-hmm. We really do. So I never thought that that could come into fruition. And one thing that you've been teaching me is that if you want something, just stop wanting it so bad and just let it come to you. And I remember I actually put on Facebook, I was like, I really wanted to have a female best friend. And let me tell y'all, me and her is on the same page when it comes to using the word best friend. I, I'm going to just tell my reason why I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like using the word best friend because I don't ever want to make any of my other friends feel like that they are less than. Like, if I say that this is my best friend, so what does that say about your other friends? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Got I just up to Right. <laughs> and I don't want to ever make my friends feel like that. I want my friends to, you know, I feel like, Friend, different friends serve different purposes, but I will say that I even her name on my phone is Soul Sister because I feel like she just under you just understand Aww. me, <laughs> you just understand me, and nobody has ever understood me like you understand well, girl, me. I get you. Yes, <laughs> and we definitely do uh, share the same sentiments as far as saying best friend because mm-hmm. I don't want my friends to feel like that either. Yeah. But it's also the thing of. I've learned over time to become my own best friend. So I use that term very lightly, period, with mm-hmm. friends anyway. So, like, I love you. Mm-hmm. Like, I say that all the time. Yeah. I love you. Every time we get off the phone, it's like, I love you, Vet. I love yes. you. Girl. Talk to you later. I love you. Mm-hmm. You know, and I feel like I don't even discuss whether you're my friend, my sister, my, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, just, it's something that's already yeah. just understood. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it came, even though I put it out there that that's the type of friendship I wanted, I was never, I had to get to the point where, I didn't not more so care about getting it. Just I just learned to love myself and then everything else just fell in line. Right. Yeah. So it's like it I feel like that this is 
Especially maybe it's with us both being cancers. Mind you, you guys, I also want to say, yes, this video is the, the, the day you're watching this video, it will, if you're watching it the day it came out, which is Friday, July the 22nd, that is the last day of cancer season. Okay. Her birthday is July the 21st. Mine's today. <laughs> my, yes. Mine's was July the 8th. So, and also with our, um, I'm not going to say exactly what our sun, moon and rising is, but all both of ours is all water. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we understand each other so much. Cause y'all I'm an emotional B I T C H life for real. I'm emotional. Like, Oh, I want to say you a bitch though. <sighs> I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't say that you just emotional, you know, and you have to figure out your emotions. And if that makes you itchy, then, mm -hmm. you know, so be it for the moment. Just turn yeah. it around, you know, the yeah. next day you be a batter bee. Yeah, like <laughs> I the but the emotions that I have, I feel like you be understanding. Even if it's something that's like, I be feeling like, why am I upset about this? Or why am I feeling this way about it? You just listen and you understand why yeah. I'm feeling the way. Feel. And see, you know that gets me in trouble though, being too understanding because I'm glad I'm like that with you because you're my friend and I mm -hmm. care about you. But when it's people that don't have my best intentions at heart, it's like, I don't really want to understand you. I don't really care to understand yeah. you anymore because, you know, it do something to me. I, if I keep understanding what you have going on, it makes me accept certain things I don't want to accept. Yeah. And I would like, even when it come down to if I talk to you about relationship things and stuff like that, it's not like you always on my side. So it's like you be understanding of the other side and some sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. depending on what the situation right, is. Right, right. And I just be like... You were supposed to be on my side, <laughs> not their side. But she don't pick sides. You just I don't. Whatever I it can't. is is what it is. It is what it is. Okay. Yeah. So I guess my thing I want to ask as far as I feel like a lot of people look at tarot as devilish or mm -hmm. look at it as you know like how does this person really know like the things that you know. And I don't know if you can even explain it the way in which people will understand because my thing is, I'll be like, well, when you shuffle in the cards, how do the cards just come out like that? Or how do like, just like, let me like the last reading that I had, she was like, did you pick up something off the floor, like glass or something? And literally like an hour before that, the candle she got me for my birthday, Kate Lani had dropped it on the floor. So it's like, I just be like, how do you know that? And sometimes I don't know how I know stuff. Just like the other day when you asked about going to food line mm -hmm. and I gave you some information about going to food line. I didn't know that you were going there. Like I said, you never go yeah. to food line. Um, but some things just come to me. When you are connected to source on a certain level where you're open to receive information, things can come to you at random times. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just you to be, it's up to you to be mindful of whatever it is that you're receiving. Yeah. So sometimes I may get a download, say, on my way here not to text you and say that I'm coming because I didn't want you to rush, mm -hmm. you know, and then I got here and you weren't ready. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, and you know what, ever since that, it's crazy because for the longest, I've always been like, I would say religious. And I was listening to something earlier and it was like, the guy, it was two men talking. They was like, let me ask you a question. If you were to grow up in Alabama, what religion do you think that you would be? And the guy said, you know, more than likely, maybe a Christian. And it was like, okay, if you was to be born in Iraq, what religion would you be? And he was saying more than likely Muslim. And he was just saying that, you know, he was saying that to say most of the time, the beliefs that are put on you is because of your what environment. You're influenced by. Mm -hmm. Right. So I for the longest, that. you know, I didn't have a relationship, you know, and I know you have a different outlook as far as me saying God, you and I'm going to ask you about that. Okay, okay. <laughs> you okay with me asking? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I never looked at it. I looked at it as, you know, I just believe in God, but I didn't have a relationship with him. And I felt like that I could say that I was Christian, but now I feel like I don't necessarily, I don't say that I'm a specific religion because for one, I feel like who is to say, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, why do we have to identify with us? religion right, right we don't <laughs> yeah like it's like who is to say christian is better than catholic right. or you know I, I just feel like that kind of is um contradicts the whole thing because it's like how can you say 
that, there's no autonomy in that. Yeah, you like know, yeah, you can't. You're not allowing people to be themselves. You're trying to group people as a collective. That's yeah. the issue in itself. You know? Yeah, like why are you trying to group? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So because I I don't. So you're telling me that. I mean, this is not going to be a religious topic, but I'm just saying, like, so you're saying, you know, God is a specific, you, like, who is to say God? Somebody obviously got to be wrong in it. And I okay. feel like, <laughs> I feel that like part. everybody can't be right. So obviously, I feel like group these different religions that they have is like, why focus on the religion instead of just focus on your own relationship with God? Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's where I'm at right now, where, I have my own relationship with him. I don't have to say I'm Christian or I'm this or I'm that. I just have my own relationship. And it's crazy that when you build a relationship with him, because I remember asking before, like, how do you know when he's talking to you? And I know you look at it differently. So I'm Uh going to ask you, okay, before we get into that, go Uh ahead. What what is your, so they can understand what's your lookout on God and what God is. Yeah. Okay, to me, God is the collective energy of all living things or not so living things in this universe. So, meaning we all are interconnected. We all play a part in what happens to the next. So, when I speak to God or of God, I'll say, if God is in everything, let me rewind. Hold up. Everything is energy. Let me start there. Mm -hmm. Everything is energy. God is energy. God is just a title given to something that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. So... In order for anything to exist, it has to have balance, which is divine feminine and divine masculine energy. So to me, I don't place a gender on God. I will use the term God sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, I prefer to say source because that's where I receive my energy. Um, but as far as placing a gender, I don't try to do that because I feel like it harnesses the same energy I do, masculine and feminine. Mm-hmm. When I hear or speak to God... I hear God talk back to me in my own voice. Yeah. You know, which is I, which is what I believe to be my higher self. The part that is connected to God, the part that understands God, the part that is willing to receive messages from God. Mhm. So every you told me that a while ago and then I started reading this book called Conversations with God and it literally said the exact same thing and it was just saying that people, you know, the question that was being asked in the book was well, if you're God, to prove that you're God, why you can't just appear in human form or why you can't just, you know, just appear? Like, if you're God, you can do it. So it was saying that <clears throat> the reason why he doesn't appear in this way is because the moment that you have this type of image in your head or title to what he's supposed to be like, if anything else forms that's yeah, it's different, that, it you won't believe it's him. Yep. Right. It forms expectation. <clears throat> right. So... I definitely agree with everything that you're saying. And I feel like people, um, you know, even when people get caught up, they be like, oh, you know, people want to say universe instead of God or say this or that. And I just feel like that goes back to saying you're stuck on a title. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because once you realize that everything is connected and God is the universe, the universe is God. I am God. God is the mm-hmm. plants, the trees, the birds, the bees. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What does it matter? Yeah. It, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. And I feel like it's kind of hard because it was hard for me to, um, I mean, I wouldn't say hard, but like to know that I'm in the image of God, meaning I have, you know what I'm saying? Like those abilities to be God like, yeah. Yeah. Like, of course, you know, people think that when you say I am God, like you're saying that you created the heavens and the earth and like, you know. What is God? What is it? God is love, right? Yeah. God is truth. God is light. All those. I don't know the Bible like that, y'all. But um, you know, if God is all those things, and you're being those things, that's being God body. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. So that's what that's that's what I wanted to address as far as the outlook on that because I do feel like people look at it as tarot is devilish. And do you feel like that? Oh. <laughs> what? I did not answer the question. <laughs> we got way off topic anyway but i was trying to go into that so people can understand your outlook on it because people are probably looking like what well, do is she re- like do she believe in god how does she really feel yeah so let me be real clear i do not have a religious preference i do believe in god you guys <laughs> i know that i did not create the heavens and you know hell i don't believe in hell either um i know i did not create the heavens and the earth and all that but um yeah look at me it's like you know baby guys we all little baby guys out here mm-hmm <laughs> And it like literally, I encourage anybody to read the book Conversations with God. Like the title itself might throw a lot of people off, but I feel like whether you're 
if you identify as atheist and what is it antagonist and anti- talk agnostic whatever well, yeah. <laughs> well, i don't know <laughs> but whoever like whatever the name is or where somebody like they they don't say they believe but they don't say they do believe either. i want to say it's agnostic yeah. i want to say that is right but whatever you believe in i <laughs> encourage everybody to read that book because it really is an insight on you know your outlook on god and it does talk about how like hell doesn't exist in the form of yeah so i just truly believe that heaven or hell is not only a mind frame but it's uh your reality of your existence mm-hmm. so say if i live this life just terrible and i go around treating people like shit and then the next life i may be ended up treated like shit mm-hmm. and that's what i get you know what i mean yeah. that's what i deserve at the end of the day and if i don't if i'm out here loving and treating people how i want to be treated and being kind and given to others and whatnot my next life i'm pretty sure will be damn good <laughs> yeah yeah i agree i agree so i i it's yeah just do your own research and i feel like for the longest i was just doing based upon what everybody else said and it's like when you start forming your own relationship i mean man the, the things that you it's kind of hard to explain because it's like i feel like everyone's journey is not the same in the way that they feel and things like that. So it's kind of hard to explain how you will feel, but I I will say it really gives you a different outlook. I mean, the things that I have been shown just in a short amount of time of where I've strengthened my relationship with him, it's just, and then even, so when you say with, okay, if I say with him as in like with God, what do you say? With God or with source. Okay. With source. Okay. Yeah. Or just I just say with God, like I never, I just never really put a placement on it. Cause first of all, that's that is like a form of patriarchy. You know what I'm saying? You're mm-hmm. not honoring the woman. I am a woman, so I I know I came from one. You know what yeah. I'm saying? From way back when. So yeah. where is it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause you're showing me a man. So like, yeah, yeah. yeah. People. That's a problem for me. Yeah, he's both though. Masculine. I mean, it don't bother me. Like it don't bother me what you say or yeah. other people say it, but it's just a personal preference. Yeah. 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 And I feel like, um, again, going back to that book, it was just saying, like, when the person kept referencing, you know, things that, like, you know, using the word God or stuff like that, it just was like, you know, that's fine. Like, that's what you, I, that's, it, mm-hmm. it just makes it easier. It makes it in simple terms yeah. for, because everybody understands, you know, in that language. Yeah. So that's how I feel on that. But I will say, um, you know, I feel like a lot of the times when people see people talk about spirituality or on a spiritual journey or this, that, and the third, they make it seem like it's like all peaches and cream because mm-hmm. that's what I thought it was going to be. But this has been like frightening. <laughs> <laughs> it has. It was for me at least. <laughs> it was very it's, frightening. How do you, how did your journey start as far as you evolving? Because but back then, like when you you know, it was just going based upon how you grew up. Did you identify with a specific religion? So I grew up Christian and it was, it came a time in my life when after I had kids, mm. I tried to, you know, grow closer to God. So I started studying the Bible and it just wasn't making sense. And this was around 2013, 2014. And that's when, um, I had a traumatic event. I had gotten to a, not an accident cause I was by myself, but I was on the highway and I did like six donuts into mm-hmm. like traffic coming behind me. And so after that moment, I was like, yo, I'm still alive. Like, how am I still alive? Somebody mm-hmm. is looking out for me. I don't know like who my angels are. I don't know who God is so I can thank them personally. Like, let me know. Yeah. So that's what made me go into studying the Bible hard. It didn't make sense to me. So that led me pretty much into a rabbit hole and led me to myself. So actually it was my daughter mm-hmm. who um, kind of triggered that thought in me because I had bought her a little Bible, a little cartoon Bible for Christmas one year, and she just used to tell me she was afraid of Jesus. So I would study Jesus, the image of Jesus Christ, things of that nature, and I came across the Council of Nicaea, which talks about the image of Jesus Christ being created um, based on the story of Haru. So after learning that information and learning how pretty much everything else that we've been taught is a lie, Mm -hmm. I had no choice but to rely on myself because I didn't trust nobody at that point. Like, you know, I couldn't trust my mom. I couldn't trust the preachers. I couldn't trust the teachers. Yeah. You know, so I pretty much had to rely on my own understanding. And that's pretty much how I got into tarot. Mm -hmm. I would watch tarot readers on YouTube um, trying to get extra insight. And I'm like, well, this is what I already know. If they know this about me and it's 12,000 people probably watching this one video right now. Like, I know I knew this already. So I went and bought my own deck and started doing my own readers and things like that. Yeah. And when I realized that 
when I was asking God for advice or asking God for information to be shown to me that I was actually getting it, that's when I knew, like, oh, the connection is open, baby. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's on. Do you feel like that everybody has the ability to um, n- not necessarily know within within themselves? Because I do feel like everybody, you know, has that ability, but mm-hmm. other people. I would say yes. It's just um, a lot of people don't recognize it as that. Mm-hmm. Some people may like me, for example, before I recognized it as what it was, I was I thought I was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Really? I would just yeah, because I would have thoughts about people or think I know stuff about people and then like it it would come to fruition. Mm-hmm. So I feel like everybody is very much able. You just have to be tapped into a certain level and you have to be willing to acknowledge your thoughts for what they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> just like remember the other day you had something simple happen to you. Mm-hmm. Um uh, with, with the lights or something. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's something that simple. Mm-hmm. And it could have just, yeah. 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 But that'd be with me. The, well, I would say, like, with other people, I mean, I guess if I'm around somebody, like, I could pick up on their energy as far as, like, how they are as a person. But I'm saying, like, when you do readings and you be knowing, like, you know, like, the little stuff, like, how the glass broke on the ground. Yeah. Like, how do you, how do you know that? about other people well yeah now that like i just that i can't explain you, you know what i mean know. yeah i just know like it's just a knowing yeah like and, it's weird. and see that's why i think i don't like surprises either because normally i know stuff you know what i mean so, so when, you so don't when know. i don't know it's like how did i not know this like wait what like yeah. what did it take to get to this point for me not to know still you know mm-hmm. it's just yeah yeah it's girl it be it be i'm i i i'm, I'm I was about to say it'd be freaking me out, but it don't freak me out in a bad way. It's just more so like how in the world they actually notice because let me tell y'all like recently my son was sick and he had a fever and he never gets sick. So she was like, check for mold in the house. So I'm thinking like mold, like where will mold be at? (laughs) Right. Like where will mold be at? And this house was just built like, so I was like maybe in the windows or something, but it ended up being in, I don't know if y'all know, like, the little sponge that make your hair curly. My son was using that sponge and not wringing the water out. So it was mold in the sponge. So that was what was making. And as soon as he, I washed his hair, he was fine. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And I was like, how did she I didn't know even that? know he used the sponge. Exactly. You know, so. So that's how I know for a fact that it's real because you have told me things that I have, you know, nobody would know. You right. know what I'm saying? There's right. no way for you to know. Even down to one of our very first readings with the red shirt. Yeah. And then, you yeah. end up seeing a red shirt. So, yeah. Yeah. It is. It's not scary to me anymore. Um, but it's interesting. I'll say that. I'll say that. It's very interesting. It's scary <laughs> to me. Like when stuff happened, I guess, in my own life. And it's like, I seen this or like this was playing out in my head, especially like with my dreams like that. Yes. The, the dreams because like, it makes me wonder like what the hell like what does that mean yeah. you know and with dreams it's kind of hard because it might not always mean exactly what you dreaming and it might not happen right away like sometimes like mm-hmm. with readings it mm-hmm. don't happen right away sometimes so yeah you always get a lot of downloads during your dreams yeah, so. girl, y'all definitely yeah. I get a lot with my dreams and it be the simplest things that I told Ashley I was like well why he keep showing me simple stuff well I keep saying he I'm sorry no, when you do I what mean, you do but <laughs> But even, I mean, I'm I'm gonna still say God because that's just what I feel comfortable with saying. But I don't like identifying him as a he. Like, yeah. But I'm just it's so habitual. Used, mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I just was wondering, like, why do I keep getting simple things? Like, I want to know the big things. Like, like when am I, you know, <laughs> gonna take off? Like, that's what I want to know. But it's simple things that I would get y'all. Like, literally, the simplest things. It'll be something that. I was thinking about or pondering about and I just let it go and then the answer will come in my dream and then I'll wake up and then I'll look look it up or whatever it was told in my dream, I'll go, you know, see if it's accurate and it'll be accurate. The simplest thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can cuss, girl. But that's how I um yeah, I feel like a lot of the time people say that their spiritual journey started when something traumatic happened in their yeah. lives. And I feel like with me, it started with, um, so in October of last year, that's when I feel like it really, really started for me because that was such a hard month. And 
the person that I lost was not even a family member, but you know, I was close to her Mm -hmm. and it just really hurt me. And it's like, it's crazy how deaf, you know, people say that it could be like a near death experience, but you know, do you ever hear about it where somebody else? Yeah. Dying? Cause it's all traumatic. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's still traumatic, even though it's not directly affecting you, like physically affecting you. Yeah. It's emotionally affecting you. So yes. Yeah. Because I feel like now the main thing that I be thinking about, so, and I don't know how to stop thinking about it is that like, I know time <laughs> is not, <laughs> We say time is not, you know, like time is not real. You know right. what I'm saying? Like we, we, all of this is man-made as far as saying, um, it's 11 o'clock or right, like right. the day or something like that. But I feel like, I don't know, like ever since that death happened, like I miss her. Yes. I feel like it more so made me open my eyes to where I'm like, we all going to die. Like, and when yeah. you actually sit and think about that, it's like. You know, it's kind of yeah. sad. It is. It is. Um, you know, I have a little more lighthearted outlook on death. Um, I look at death as more so of an accomplishment. Um, I feel like source would not let either one of us leave this earth without us fulfilling our purpose. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I hope I'm not leaving this earth no time soon because I feel like I got stuff to do. Yeah. But, um, you know, our plan is not Me always too. the plan. <laughs> so <Sure> not. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, I'm not there yet because it really makes me sad. Like, I was in the grocery store today about to cry because it just makes me... Like, anytime I see somebody old, girl, and that never used to bother me. Like, really? (laughs) This sounds so bad, but old people used to get on my nerves because they so stuck in their ways. You know what? Old people used to get on my nerves, too, until I started working at the eye doctor and all of our patients were old. Mm. I mean, we maybe had a couple 21-year-olds come in there every once a month or something like that. But everybody else was old. And then I just learned to really just care for them and learn that you were once me. Like, mm-hmm. you used to get around like I used to get around. You used to be spunky how I'm trying to be spunky with you right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know they get spunky back, too. They but that sure be the do. problem. <laughs> that do be the problem. But, they know, don't have no filter. I learned to um, respect them. You know, they feel like they got an honorary badge. I don't give them all that. But I mm-hmm. give them a little respect when it's given to me. Yeah, yeah. I just, when I see old people grab it, like, oh, that's going to be me one day. Um, and it really makes me feel like, And I know you say try not to rush the process. And honestly, it's like, listen, at this point, I can't rush it. It's going to come whenever it comes. But it do make me feel like, like, damn, like, time is just, I'm not going to say running out because I'm still young. But just to know that we don't have forever on this earth. Yeah. And, you know, you doing, you not doing things out of fear or doing things, you know, just because you... I mean, I guess it just goes back to fear. fear it, yeah. it, 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 it really bothers me now because I just be like, even like you don't have all the time in the world. Like we getting older. And yeah. I, but just remind yourself, you got all the time and every day that you have right in front of you. And, and that's, some, that's what it. I'm struggling with. Mm-hmm. The like just being in the now. That's what I'm really yeah. struggling with because it's hard. It ain't for, easy. Cause sometimes what the now is don't look all that good. No. And then <laughs> I realized that I've always been like this since I've been little. Like when I was, when people talk about certain things, like I'll never forget what made me realize that I never really lived in the now was when I was in Charlotte and you know how usually if you're ordering some food, they'll give you like a ticket number or something like Mm -hmm. that. But this restaurant actually asked you, what was your favorite Christmas gift? And Whatever you tell them, they're going to call it out. And when they call it out, that means your food ready. Oh. So when she asked me what was my favorite Christmas gift, I couldn't even remember. And it's not like my parents ain't giving me a Christmas because they definitely yeah. did. But that just made me feel like I just never really remember. Never, yeah, it took yeah. the time to really process the moment yeah. that you were in. I feel like I always was looking ahead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and now... <laughs> Now I'm really realizing that I'm doing that and I don't like how it feel because... Oh, I do it too. And it, it don't feel good, but it gives you something to look forward to. But yeah, that's it the do. thing. You just look forward to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But as a child, how do you do that though? Like, I'm saying like yeah. as a child, you know, I feel like ch- children usually live in the moment. It's like for me to be like that since I was a child. 
Well, some it's of crazy. us grow up in ways that make us feel like we are ready to get out of that phase of life. You know what I'm saying? It may have been something going on in that phase of life that you mm-hmm. felt like you were just ready to get away from. And yeah. you felt like maybe getting older would solve the problem. Yeah. Look, so <laughs> unfortunately, I thought getting older was going to solve we the problem. Out. <laughs> we found we out. We found out that was a lie. Okay. Because <laughs> <Girl. laughs> guess what? <laughs> If I could just go back to the hands of time and not have to worry about no bills and not have to work, listen. Look. <laughs> but I it's it's I remember you asked me, you was like, you know, what's something that you really enjoyed when you was young? And at first I really you asked me, was I like, you did I write and stuff like that? And I, I at that time I really wasn't reading books. And now that I'm reading books now, I remember how much reading books just mm-hmm. I used to go to the library and have literally stacks, girl. Like stacks. It was no way for me to read all them books yeah. in 30 days or however long right, they give you. Right. But I have so many. So now it's like <laughs> I literally have you a be lot reading now. Them though. <laughs> but I and I do be reading them. But it's like a different genre of books. And I feel like that definitely started, you know, changing my mindset. Yeah. And I feel like that's where a lot of people go wrong at in life is that they don't realize that it's your mindset a lot your mindset if you change yes. your mindset that could change so much yeah you got to look at it as like um like a movie projector whatever you're projecting whatever you're seeing out here is whatever's going on in there so mm-hmm. if you don't have that together then all of the rest of it's just going to be out of whack like yeah. it's not going to make sense it's going to be chaotic yeah <laughs> just yeah. chaotic because if you're thinking, first of all, with a lack mindset or a jealous mindset, a traumatized mindset, all of that is destructive for your who you're trying to become. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're trying to become somebody. Mm-hmm. So, do you feel like that? Um, so, say for instance, like years ago when I wasn't into all of this, like you know how you say your highest self and things like that. It's like, do you feel like your highest self can change, or do you feel like it's always? the same is just that you have to keep progressing in life. I definitely feel like it changes. And I say that it changes. Well, it's, it's not that it never, it's not that it changes. It's just that there's always room for elevation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, even if I had met you a couple years ago, I wouldn't be this right mm. now. You know what I'm saying? Our conversations probably would have been a little more gossipy. Yeah. And we would have been, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just going out or, you know, anything. We don't, we don't even go out. <laughs> we don't like, <laughs> we don't do that. So, <laughs> Yeah, um, I do definitely feel like that because maybe a year ago I thought I was at my mm-hmm. highest. So, I mean, I, I knew I wasn't at my highest, but I felt like I yeah, was at my highest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I say 2020. 2020 was my year. And now where I'm at, I'm just like, oh, okay, I see it's a whole bunch of stuff up there. I got to yeah. get up there. I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like right now that's it's like when you can see, when you can see how far you can go, and with me personally, when you're resisting it, that causes so much. And I don't know where I heard this at, but I was I was listening and they were saying that a lot of the times when people have depression or anxiety mm-hmm. and things like that, they don't realize that you resisting your highest self can cause those problems. Yes. And that's why sometimes when you go through spiritual awakeness or spiritual ascension mm-hmm. you'll have symptoms like you're in a cold you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. your body is changing on a cellular level yeah. your body is really going through some th- it's going through some things yeah so. girl remember when i was telling you, i was i was like ashley i'm just so tired like mm-hmm. i'm tired but i can't go to sleep mm-hmm. like every even time- aching like kidney issues i mean deep mm-hmm. issues you know heart attacks stuff like mm-hmm. that heart attacks sometimes can become from um closed heart chakras y'all open your heart chakra mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. girl and it's it's like when you start just caring more about your internal being, it just changes so much around you, honestly. It really does. Like, even now, to you caring more about what you eat. Now, don't get it twisted. I still eat meat, and I still eat dairy, but I will say that I'm more conscious of it now. Like, mm-hmm. at first, I was just eating it. I ain't care. Like, now, I'm more conscious of, like, Yvette, you know, that's not good for you. Yeah. My sister asked me yesterday, um... You still only drinking water? And I'm like, yeah, you don't really drink soda or juice or nothing like that unless I really, really, really mm-hmm. want it. And she was like, how is it? How come is that the only, mm, how come that's the only thing you can have discipline on when it comes to eating? And I'm like, I don't know, because if it's cheesecake, I'm eating it. Like, yeah. I'm eating it. So 
my thing is this. I'm not backsliding on the juice and the sodas because I know I've mastered that. So yeah. I'm going to stick with that one thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's what I do. So you don't dr- drink juice or soda no, at all? No, not unless I'm having it in a mixed drink or, you know what I'm saying? I need oh. to burp or something eating Chinese yeah. food. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what, Ashley? That's something that's actually easy for me, too. If I only had to drink water, I'm, I would be good. Like, I don't crave yeah. sodas. I'm not saying that I'll never drink it but it would never be me like going into the store and getting, getting a, a soda, soda. Yeah. like no it would have to be like maybe if i'm out at a restaurant and i don't want to drink the tap water right like right. something like that so it, it it really you know it's just i don't know that's just something we both on the same page yeah. with because i don't I, people be saying they don't like water how you don't like water yeah but see i i grew up not drinking water we lived in cape charles mm. and the water in the town from the tap was just oh, nasty. It was nasty. Yeah. And then back then, you know, it was the 90s. Wanna buy buy no damn bottle of water like that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we drank Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> and did y'all listen, she, she taught me this, y'all. Did y'all know that when it come down to water, even when it's saying like it's alkaline, it's not truly alkaline if they're adding something to it. Correct. Right. So the best water for us to drink is spring, spring water. water. And it gotta be nothing added to it. Right, yeah. Your water ingredients. <laughs> Should say nothing but water. Yeah, it's water. <laughs> and it's I was drinking smart water, and they made the the, the version of alkaline. And I was looking at, it and it was like added electrolytes for taste or whatever mm-hmm. or whatever like that. And I'm like, oh, so I'm not really. That's like even when you get stuff that has natural flavors added. Mm-hmm. Natural flavors can come from like uh, bull balls and things like mm. that. Yeah, literally. See, so, <laughs> sometimes I'll be wondering, <laughs> like bull ball. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Bull ball, yeah. girl. When the, now every time I think about milk, and somebody, girl, somebody said that it was the cow's puss. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Puss. It's like ten thousand puss cells in like an eight ounce glass of milk or something. Yeah. And we giving our babies that. Yeah. Don't give your babies that. Try not to give your babies that. <laughs> I'm, I still I give mean, my babies that. <laughs> Like, you know, try to make some almond milk, homemade almond milk, maybe. Because the almond milk in the store, I drink it for my cereal. I don't drink milk, but, like, I put it in my cereal. But other than that, I yeah. can't do it. Tear my stomach up. It yeah. just tears my stomach up. Yeah. It do mess my stomach up, too. But, like, with the twins, I, I, I guess I'm just not that far yet. Because it's like they were on can Similac for the whole first year. And then going, honestly, that's just my laziness. Like, me making almond milk. You know how much it is a bit extreme. That's why I'm glad I ain't got no more babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shoot, but shout out to you though, because look, you do that. Girl, thank you, be you because that. listen, if I had to breastfeed twins, girl. That's why they ain't breastfeed. So I can't do that. That's this too much. Yeah. That's too much. Um what question did you want to ask say, me? Okay. It's such a minuscule question, but what? Y'all, she said that she been waiting to ask me this question, <laughs> but she said small. So go ahead. <laughs> so, a couple of my friends have asked me. So, is Bianca your friend's middle name or something? And I don't know what to tell me, babe. Yeah. And I did, and I thought so, but like I never see you write it. I've been waiting for you to write it, low key, or <laughs> something. Boy, I could just see it without asking. But like, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is, and it's. Uh, I, the reason why I changed my name to Bianca on wherever <laughs> <laughs> is because I didn't want people to search me from. Well, look, places. y'all, honey, y'all can find her on YouTube. Y'all already know <laughs> Buzzsprout, Apple, Apple Music, uh, Amazon Music, all of that. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but yeah, that's where it came from. They, they really asked you that? Yeah, like my sister asked me, Laquita asked Who's me. Who's Bianca? Yeah, she was like, is Bianca a middle name? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if it's a pen <laughs> name. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Let me find out. Yeah. So yeah, I told you it was very small, mm-hmm. but something that I just did not know. And I feel like I know a lot of stuff about you. It's something that small that I didn't know. And I was like, yo. Yeah, girl. I didn't want, honestly. Do you know my middle name? Mm-mm. Sorry, I didn't even cut you no, off. But I had to think tell. about it. Chantel? Yeah. Oh. yeah. And you see how y'all, like, we still learn it about each other. Yes, That's we are. crazy that we still learn about each other, but we still feel so, we be so in tune a yes. lot. Yes. A lot, y'all. It's kind of crazy sometimes because stuff will be happening to her and be happening to me, or we'll be experiencing the same thing at the same time. It's, 
even down to the sweet and sour, because mm -hmm. you know how you said your sweet and sour was kind of of the same thing? Uh -huh. Mine was too, and I was like, dang, I kind of want to switch it now because I don't want it. Like, <laughs> we're just too much in sync from here. Yeah, yeah, so I did yeah. switch it up. Like, that's why I was kind of like, ah. Yeah, it's crazy. And you know, I also heard somewhere that <laughs> people that you are supposed to have a relationship with in life, you'll, it's, you'll find out that y'all sync in different like, ways. Like, you know, maybe, and I feel like with us having the same horoscope, our birthday, mm -hmm. you know, both in July, we both cancers, we both all got water signs. Yeah. So it's like... It's a lot of random ticks, too, that yeah. both we can't stand. Or, you know, mm -hmm. just little stuff. I feel like we get a... We pretty much agree on a lot of mm -hmm. stuff. And see, that's the thing. It's like, my mom always say that. It don't take... It, you always get tired of people quit. And I'd be like, yeah, I do. But I feel like that's why we get along so good because we understand yes. that we get tired of yes. people quit. So I, I don't know. I just, I do get tired of people quit. Like I really do. And let me just say, you do not get on my nerves. Right. Cause people like, getting on my nerves. And I said it because it's a difference between getting tired of people quit and people getting on your nerves yeah. because I might not get tired of you quick, but that don't mean you don't get on my nerves. Mm -hmm. I didn't get tired of you quick. And you don't get on it. So that says a lot, right? Yeah. Because with me, it's the same thing. And that's why when I was growing up, I mean, I don't know if this is the reason why, but I never really kept female friends. Girl. And I always thought that it was me. Like, God, like, am I not meant to have female friends? See, that's another reason why I use the term best friend very mm -hmm. lightly because the couple best friends I had have shown me otherwise. Yeah. You know, and it's okay. It's a learning, growing moment. We was young, you know, things happen, people grow, whatever. But um, it lets me know that people that close to you that you would consider your sister for yeah. real would hurt you. Like, yeah, I don't, I'm not just going to pit anybody. I'm not going to get that title to anybody like that. Yeah. And people will, like, literally, they will hurt you. Like, you'll call them your best friend or somebody that you're close to with, and then you'll just... But guess what? What? Doing that shadow work, honey, I had to realize... I allowed them motherfuckers to play me like that. Yeah, yeah. And also, it's like, I feel like even when it came down to friendships, sometimes, you know, you'll see that somebody not... For me, this is where it fell in that. I started to accept different friendships and things that I felt like people really weren't truly being my friend because I felt like I didn't know what it felt like to have a true friend. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, well, maybe this is just it. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is just... You know, females are catty. Maybe this is just how it's going to be. Right. You know Ain't what I'm nothing saying? Else. <laughs> Ain't right. And I felt like, you know, even now to, you know, me and you have a lot of the same things that we do the same things, but in our own way. And yeah. you see a lot of the times where people, their friends do the same thing. And it's like competition. And yeah. I never, ever, ever yeah. felt like that between me and you. Thank God. And it's just. Because we would not, we could not do this if it was, <laughs> honey. <laughs> for real like, and we do a lot of the same things y'all but it's just like if i go to ashley to help ask you for help with something you have no problem you know yeah. helping me or just being you help there. me with whatever i ask help with for yeah, it's just <laughs> like we, because i feel like it's not a situation to where you trying to copy somebody i feel like sometimes they do be trying to, people be trying to copy it's more so like this is what we truly want to do and we are true Sells. Like, we both yes. got podcasts, but you have it the way that you want to have it, and I have it the way I want to have yes. it. Yes, and shout out to my girl on the consistency, y'all, because let me tell <sighs> you, so honey. I'm so proud I, of her. The way I don't I'm be consistent. <laughs> Thank you, girl. The way I don't be consistent. I'm proud of you, because you done put up two two episodes. Girl, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the way I do not be consistent, but I feel like that's another thing that you taught me before when I, when I was talking to you about trying to eat right and go to the gym. And you was like, Yvette, maybe, maybe it's just not time. <laughs> like, yeah, like maybe because you're giving it your all. Like if you, if you could do more, you would, you would. And I feel like with the podcast that taught me that because with my YouTube channel, I was not being consistent with uploading, but with the podcast, I am because that's something I, and listen, don't be watching this video and be thinking, Oh, so she don't want to, that's not it. It's just, I different. feel like, yeah, I feel like when you're doing something where you are being your really authentic and true self, it just hit different. It do. And let me say this too. And I told you before you even uploaded the first uh, episode of your podcast that your podcast was going to motivate me to get yeah. back up and going how I needed to yeah. with my podcast. And that's how you know it's not a competition thing. It's a motivation. Mm -hmm. You motivate me. I, med I motivate you. Yeah. And I love that because like my other friend, they won't like that. <laughs> I mean... I 
got good friends, y'all. I'm just saying that the friends that I had, we don't really be on the same things mm-hmm. to be motivating each other in that arena. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, And honestly, I feel like that matters so much to have friends around you that it's on your level. Because yeah. I feel like that's one of the hardest things for me right now is like the goals that I want to reach. When you don't have nobody around you that is like on the same wavelength, it's hard. Did it shock you when I told you I didn't have goals? Yeah, because <laughs> when you say you don't have goals, I'm like, well, how you don't have goals? And you got a business, you got different things that yeah. you're doing. And it's like, I think I, I told you, but it's like, I don't really look at it as a goal because I know me and I know if I set something out there, like, okay, I need to get to that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to worry myself until I get there. I don't want to worry. I want to yeah. enjoy the ride. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I really want to enjoy it. And see me on the flip side, if I just do it when I feel like doing yeah. it, it ain't going to get done. Yeah. See, so, that's how I get all my life stuff done, <laughs> y'all. I wing it. <laughs> and I just can't. I can't. Like, we definitely opposite with that. I can't yeah. do it. I can't. Like, if I had to wing it, girl, I would be all over the place. And it's crazy because even now to like the house and stuff like that, it's like, if things are not in order, which majority of the time is not my everything up here in my mind is just mm-hmm. scramble. And that's how I feel like a lot of the just stress come from because yeah. it's just like, I be wanting things to be in order in all areas of my life. And when it's not girl, I just be like, listen, too in order. I feel like I have expectations of myself. I don't like having people put expectations on me, even if it's myself. And it may be, I might just be lazy. You know, I might just not want to hold myself accountable. Y'all call me out. <laughs> but I just don't like, it just, it put pressure on me. Yeah. And I'd rather like, for example, this episode right here, we knew we was going to do this for a while. I feel like you should have just told me yesterday. I'm like, girl, can you pull up? And I probably would have put up like, yo, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm good. I'm chilling. But yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to know in the, advance. The anticipation is just, it's too You much. don't like it. I don't like it. But why? Like, is it? You know, I'm not like that with anything. I'm playing nothing. Like, you know, my birthday Thursday mm-hmm. I ain't got a plan in the first. So, you know, but I know I'm going somewhere. I know I'm doing something. Yeah. Still don't know. But girl, I can't. When it comes to vacations, I literally be planning three months ahead. Girl, in the whole three months, I would be like in my closet, <laughs> like what I got to wear. All right, not that. Okay. Girl, I can't do it. I can't. Maybe that's why I'm so hard on myself with not reaching my goals because I'm like. I know what I want to do. And if I'm not doing it, then it's bothering me because I'm not doing it. But if I was to just wing it, it would just feel like, oh, I'm doing it. Oh, I'm doing it. Oh, I'm doing it. <laughs> but I, yeah. I don't think it would be like that for me. No. No. And it's crazy. Go ahead. I was going to say, let me say, though, it don't always work, though, y'all. <laughs> it Girl. don't always work. And, you know, I, for the most part, it does because I have literally winged my whole life. Like, everything mm-hmm. works out on my favor. Thanks, source. Like, I'm so thankful, but it has been a couple times where I've dug myself into a hole and I'm like, oh shit, Ashley, all right, you got to get up out of it, but I get up out of it. Yeah. And that's what makes me keep doing it. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. Because you told me that in my, my my most recent reading. You was like, I just was like, Ashley, you know, anytime that I don't worry about money, money just fall in my lap. And you was like, yeah, but the reverse of that is if you just feel like it's going to fall in your lap and you're not actually trying to do nothing about it. It's like, that's, that's exactly what I was talking about. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's exactly what I was talking about because it came a time where money was coming to me so easy. I didn't have to lift a finger even. And it just seemed like people was coming for readings. People was buying products. Like people was getting their hair done. And then it's like the moment I started just relying on it or just knowing that money was coming and not posting and mm-hmm. getting, um, getting sales or getting bookings for doing hair. It's like, God, like, no, 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 you ain't gonna get none of that no more. You ain't putting in no work. <laughs> yeah, it's like you gotta put in the work. And I feel like that's, see, see, with me, the way I think about it in my mind is that I can have everything planned out in my head, but I will not do nothing. And it's crazy because it's like, okay, Yvette, you have everything planned out in your head of how you want it to be, what you wanna do, when you wanna post it. And then I literally won't do anything. And it's kind of like, I personally saying it out loud, it doesn't make sense, but I know I'm not the only one because even when I read books, you know, it'll say like, it'll start talking about how you, you want something so bad, but you don't move your feet. It's like you in cement or something. It's like, I feel like 
Say if this is your, say if this is your goal, right? And mm-hmm. you right here. I feel like you being close to it and not being able to touch it would bother you more than being back here. And that's probably why you don't want to get there. You know what I'm saying? It's just probably why it scares you to take the steps because, you know, the closer you get, it's the closer to touch it, but you still ain't got your hand on it. That's frustrating. Yeah. You know? I, especially when I can't see it. So, like, right now, I'm relying completely on, faith. on God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, just showing me signs. Like, literally showing me just crazy signs. But then it's still that part of me that's like, well, is this really a sign or is this just a coincidence? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like nothing's a coincidence. <laughs> and that's, you know, and I will say, yes, I feel like it's a coincidence. And, and that's why it's like, it's hard because it's like, I just don't move my feet because you know how they always say you could put, do whatever you put your mind to whatever you, you can get whatever you want out of life. And then here I am. But can you, can you really, girl and yes you can and see and that's why it's hard for me sometimes to believe that because the life that I know I want for myself I can't even I can imagine it in my mind Mm -hmm. as dreaming it like oh like only if I could get there but to actually be in it I can't see myself there well try seeing yourself in the stages to get there first yeah, that's the problem. I want to go from here. You're, yeah, to there. <laughs> I told you. you be real A to Z sometimes, you know. Yeah, Gonzalez. <laughs> like I don't want no in between, and that's that goes back to I guess me not being in the now. I'm so focused on the goal yeah. and not the process to get there. But really, the process it w- is what makes it so great because then you can look back. Because honestly, if it was given to me easy, I wouldn't appreciate it as mm-hmm. it, as much as I did trying to. Yeah. Get that shit out the mud. Yeah. Like, for Everything real. that was given to me easy, I didn't really appreciate it. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and I, you know, I guess that's, like, sometimes I think about how much work I have to put in to get to my goal. And mm-hmm. that's what makes me be like. Oh, you know what? I appreciated it for the moments. And that's how I know it's mm-hmm. important to live in the now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, like. Because the, the bliss of it goes away. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. honestly, like, you know, I got my, I drove in my dream car when I was in Houston. And like, when I first sat in it and when I first saw it, I was like, oh my goodness. Like, but as I was driving Second, it around, time, I'm like, I was like, all right, let me get in the work. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, it, 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 it didn't give me that same euphoria. And that just goes to show that material things can't give you the happiness. It cannot give you the happiness right. that's internal. And, you know, I even said that and not on my podcast, but in one of the videos I posted on Instagram where I was saying, like, when we first moved into this house, every time I walked in, I'd be like, oh, man, like the kitchen is beautiful. And like people would walk in and be like, dang. I remember one delivery guy, because, you know, when you first move in somewhere, they be delivering. Right. stuff. He was like, dang, did I just walk into heaven? But now I walk in the house and I'm just like, it's Blah. just a kitchen. Yeah. So it's like. That's how people can be in mansions and all these other and have everything they want material wise Mm -hmm. and not be happy. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to have internal happiness. What? You guys want to say? I just thought about, I had a a, just a vision when you were talking about getting from point A to B or A to Z or whatever. I'm such a frolic in the moment type of person. If I'm going from A to B, I'm going to go from A to A and a quarter to A and a half to, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah, I, I enjoy the process. The process. Yeah. Yeah. I need to learn how to do that. For real. You just have to find... Well, I know I say this all the time, too, but you have to find a reason in every moment to be just thankful that you're going through whatever it is that you're going through. Like that uncomfortable situation where I had to say what I mean, even though I didn't... I felt like I was doing the person an injustice, mm-hmm. but, you know, it was it had to be yeah. done. Like... And it's so hard. Like, girl, it still to this day, I'm still learning how to say what I mean because it, but at first it used to be hard for me to speak up for myself, even for the smallest things. Like if I ain't like my nails, I would just say I like them and just go home and just cry. Yeah. Like, or if my hair or anything like that, it was hard for me to speak up because I felt like this is somebody craft. I don't want to offend, offend them. them. But then again, it's like, I'm paying I'm for this. Offended. <laughs> yeah, I'm offended that you would do that to me. Yeah. Why would you have me going out here looking like yeah. this? And you think that that shit okay? Like I know you, no. But 
that's how it was so hard for me to to speak up for myself and that's why a lot of the times even with with men I didn't speak up for myself and you know even though that's something that I'm still learning to this day to speak up for myself because I'll just keep brushing shit under the rug like it used to be bad bad to where yeah. I allow a man to do things to me that I'm like now I look bad and I be like no fuck what you thinking like girl I always gotta put myself in the homegirl shoes you know when you in a situation and you just like look I'm fucked up I don't really know what I need to do how I'm supposed to do it Put yourself in your homegirl shoes. What would you tell your homegirl to do? Mm-hmm. Like, because you know, you're going to keep it real with your homegirl. If yeah. you like us, you're going to yeah. keep it real with a look. Girl, you need to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and sometimes you don't be wanting to hear it for real. But, girl, so many times, I'd be like, I know what Ashley going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and not even just with relationship stuff, but just, mm-hmm. you know, in general, just dealing with day-to-day stuff. Yeah. It's, it, it was very hard for me to speak up for myself, though. But I will say, once I started speaking up for myself, it's just, it felt so much better because people, you would hope that people wouldn't step all over you or cross boundaries, but they will. They will. Especially if they know that you are a pushover and you don't have no boundaries mm-hmm. or you're not going to speak up for yourself, they will. Mm-hmm. And it's like, even though you look at it, it's like, well, why would they even do that to me? Like, why would they even say those things or, you know, do an act that you would never do, but... Then that's the part when you got to realize, I allowed them. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's the part that sucks. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. That's what it boiled down to. Yeah. Yeah. How do you... So, what do you... what? As exactly okay i guess explain to them what it means when people talk about your shadow self so your shadow self is the side of you that you do not want folks to know about you know the part of you that be lying and you know cheating maybe or you know um manipulating or even just the side of you that judges other people or cries a lot or just things that you don't really readily put out there about yourself mm-hmm. um some of these things could be repressed because you felt like they were unaccepted by your family or even by yourself, you know, by whoever you grew up around, whatever environment you're in at work or whatnot. So those are the sides of ourselves that we usually explore or reject um, in our alone time. Yeah. And so the ego is pretty much what's covering up the shadow self? I would say this. Yes, to an extent, because I feel like your ego spans across your shadow and your light self because ego isn't always bad. It, I mean, it's, it serves a purpose. Mm-hmm. I'll say that it serves a purpose. Yeah. Cause I was wondering mm-hmm. if it's ever possible to completely, you know how they say you're deaf of your Kill ego. ego. Mm-hmm. Is it possible to do that? Because when I was in Houston, girl, I was, <laughs> when I was driving past the Turkey Lake, I made sure to roll down all the windows and blast the music. <laughs> and, 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 so we look at my car and I'm like, I knew in that moment that I was doing that. For my ego. But it's like, I recognize it, but that's still I mean, what I wanted to do. <laughs> I look at it like this. I feel like the whole killing your ego, pitting death to the ego thing is more so pitting it in its place. Because mm-hmm. no matter what you do to it, no matter how many times you tell it, go sit down, this and that, this and that. When it's ready to come out, it's going to come out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you're yeah. not good at controlling it, you know? So it's always going to be a part of you. Yeah, You just have to learn when you're going to let it out. Yeah. And addressing your shadow self is really like, I feel like that's where I'm at right now. And it don't feel good to know, like Mm -hmm. to, to have to really be truthful and honest with yourself. It's like, it sounds so good, but it's something that is, is not a good feeling because I feel like it's so easy to place the blame and play victim. Mm -hmm. So when you have to take responsibility, Mm -hmm. That's like I was telling you specifically about being a manipulator. Um, I learned that I was a manipulator in a relationship, and I didn't stop, though. I took that trait and took it into the next relationship mm-hmm. I got into and started manipulating there. Because when, when I learned out, I mean, when I learned that things were happening because that's what I manifested, these are the things that I brought to fruition, oh, girl, I was trying all kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, and it's easy. Mm-hmm. For real, like, I mean... I ain't going to embarrass myself in that, but <laughs> yeah, just know that <laughs> I thought things were working out in my favor, but they backfired, y'all. Yeah. Big yeah. time. <laughs> and when you start to realize, girl, when you start to realize 
it's it's not a good feeling. Girl. It's really not. It's not a good feeling. And I feel like that's when I started to learn about um because when it came down to having kids by different men, I always looked at it as, well, they won't shit. Like I had to get rid of them. Like they mm-hmm. just they won't doing what they were supposed to be doing. So I went on to the next. Instead of realizing that Yvette you are the reason why these things happen because ain't nobody forced you to lay down and do these things. Okay. You are the reason why these things happen. So to realize that, to realize that you, it was your fault and it was you, that is so hard. And that's why, remember when I called you and broke down crime before, the, before I did the podcast, uh-huh. because to know that, Things that is going to affect my kids for the rest of their life is my fault. Do you know how hard? Yeah. That, and I, I'm I'm tearing up I right know. now. <laughs> but just know, I just know that I feel the same way about my one baby daddy, okay? Yeah. I, I played victim for probably 10 years, okay? <laughs> uh, just saying, you know, just... Oh, you okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, just trying to play victim, just trying to act like I had no fault and acting like I didn't know who he was when I got pregnant or acting like I didn't know who I was yeah. when I got pregnant. <laughs> so, you know... Mm-mm. It was tough. Yeah. And I feel like now it's like, I don't blame them at all, you know, as far as the guys no more. But it's just, I feel like I love, well, as you should. I love my kids so much and I just feel bad for doing that to them. Yeah. Because my decisions changed the path of their life for the rest of their life. Because at the end of the day, you know, if your dad, if, if I decided to have a child with a man that was not going to take care of their child, you know, that's something that's going to affect him. You know, I I know you told me just be the best mother that I can be and focus on what I'm doing, but it's still, you know, in my mind, I'm like, that's something that's going to affect him. Yeah. And it is. And you know, I thought about that after I told you that, but you got to think that's coming from somebody who my baby, te- my baby daddy told me, I don't want the baby without the girl. Yeah. So I had to have, had that kind of mm-hmm. mindset, you know what I'm saying? Even though we were together for a while afterwards and stuff, but I knew at the, at the end of the day, look, this nigga don't want the baby without the girl, so I yeah. need to make sure that at all times I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's girl, Lord. Look, I definitely started crying, <laughs> but I mean, I've definitely been doing that, you know, of course, clearly, because I ain't got no damn choice. Okay, I ain't got no choice, but it's is. I feel like more so my heartache come from my kids right now, you know, for my kids. Mm-hmm. They don't even realize it right now because they just to to him, his daddy, the best thing that walked this earth. Okay. And look, and don't interrupt <laughs> that for them. And you I know, don't. I yeah. don't talk bad about his dad. I let him feel like whatever he, look, every time he get mad at me, I want to go stay with my daddy. Even though in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'd be like, call him. Where? Where? Call him. <laughs> call him. <laughs> And my kid, you know, shout out, shout out to my kids, dad, because he will hold it down. Yeah, so. yeah. So, girl, it's just realizing that you are uh, realizing that you are the reason why things happen the way that it happened. It's very, very, very much not a good feeling. It's not. It's not a good feeling. So, I'm glad we had this talk though, because I feel like I wanted to definitely show other people. I had a question. If you bought a wrap it, I had a question. I just, okay. I just wanted to say why I wanted to do okay, this talk. Okay, okay. I really just wanted to do this talk because I wanted to show other people that may have questions as far as tarot. Because I'll be honest, if I tell my mom like, "Mom, I got a reading today. I know you don't like me getting a reading, but I just want to tell you what it's it." You know what right. I'm saying? Like, I be trying to bypass it just uh-huh. to tell her. And you know, I just wanted to give insight to other people and to also encourage everybody to just have your own relationship with God and mm-hmm. do your own research and your own spiritual journey. And like I said about that book conversations with God, one of the things that it definitely mentioned is do what you feel is right. You okay. know what I'm saying? And your in, inside, do what you feel is right. You know, you, somebody can't, I can't tell you what's right for you. I can give you my suggestion, but you yeah. gotta go for what you feel is right for you because yeah. I'm not in your shoes. I'm not. I'm not in that. Like I don't. I'm not dealing with that directly. Yeah. yeah. I'm and giving you my perspective. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? And also, it's like I feel like throughout this whole journey of that I've been going on, trying to just better myself internally. Honestly, I stopped 
I ain't gonna say stop because sometimes I do still be looking at people and judging them in a way, right? Even though me I shouldn't. <laughs> because somebody definitely probably She's, looking at me okay. and judging me. But I feel like when you start to do the internal work, you realize that everybody have their own problems in a different way. And it's like, you can easily say, oh, I would never do that. Or I would never be this way. And it's like... And that's why I judge. Because to understand, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, how can I understand if I'm not taking the time to process what you're bringing up? You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so when people say they don't judge people, you lying. Everybody judge. Mm-hmm. So it's just about what your intention is behind the judgment. Are you mm-hmm. judging me to criticize? Or are you judging me to see if I'm a type of person you want to engage with or whatever? That's, yeah. you know, that's the big difference. So. Yeah. Because I had to learn that I don't like certain friends. I don't want around me. Like, and it's okay. I had to realize that it was okay for me not to want certain people around me. Like, mm-hmm. because for the longest I was like, well, you know, I don't want to, if they're doing this, doing that, they're, no, because that can have an effect on your life and your journey. And, having that energy around you. So, Mm -hmm. but I I try really not to judge nobody because everybody is going through their own. Like you said before, everybody is going through the same shit, just in different different ways, different time frames. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are definitely all living the same life. (laughs) Yes. What question did you have for me? So what do you think you have learned about yourself as far as, um, internally since you started your spiritual journey? Mm. Um, I definitely feel like I have always been worried about other people. That's how I feel like I've learned that about myself and that like worried about what other people think, worried about how I made other people feel, worried about, um, I guess hurting other people's feelings. I never put myself first, mm-hmm. never. And I also learned that honestly, I learned why, like how I got into this position that I'm in in my life right now. Because you know, like I, for the longest, I kind of like just was going, th- like just going through it. I never really processed and sat and thought, like, okay, that why mm-hmm. is this happening? You know, and I feel like that was the biggest thing for me because I feel like right now, still to this day, as of this day, Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm still beating myself up about the fact that I don't put myself first. And people would look at me and think I do because they'd be like, oh, she do this and she do that. and she But I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't. And that is very hurtful because I feel like I could be so much further in life if I would have put myself first. And I feel like I'm always thinking about other people and 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 nobody thinks about me. That's how I yeah. feel. That's how I feel. Even when it come down to friendships, I feel like I always was like, kind of like a third wheel, fourth wheel, whatever wheel. Yeah. I just was more so like an outsider. I think for me, well, not to just go, but you you said something that mm-hmm. I, I wanted to hit on. Like for me, I feel like I had to learn that I was people pleasing when I thought I wasn't because I would do things in such a manner too. Where me, I felt like I was doing it because here, I'm doing something for you. I'm doing something for you. You know what I'm saying? In reality, mm-hmm. I was taking from my damn self yeah. doing those things. Yeah. But I never looked at it like that. Yeah. Like, you ain't doing, you doing, the, yeah, you doing it for them, but what are you doing for you? Yeah. What are you doing for you, Ashley? I never stopped to ask myself that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and honestly, that was the same way. Like, mine was the exact same way. Like, even down to um, the most read the, the reading that we just had the other day where you was like, I just see you like about to cry and just wanting to plop on the bed. Yeah. Like that's is that gr- yesterday I went right in my room oh. and just was like, <sighs> like, but I felt like all this week I've been feeling like, and I even been saying it like, yes, I'm a mom, but I'm like, I'm tired of every time I pick my son up from school. The first thing he asked me, mom, what we eating tonight? Not how your day been. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm nothing Mm -hmm. what we eating tonight and i just felt like everybody was just taking 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 and i feel like i wasn't prioritizing myself at all then i realized that a lot of the stuff i was doing was because i expected like thank yous and to be you know gratitude Mm -hmm. from it you know what i'm saying it's not that i really wanted to do it i just wanted somebody to be thankful for me doing something for them yeah that was a problem yeah like and i be expecting people to you know what I'm saying? Like, cater to me. Like, that's how I... Like, even down to after I had babies and stuff like that, I feel like 
everybody always looked at me as like, oh, she a superwoman. She got it. She's so strong. Mm -hmm. I even had somebody, a friend that's no longer my friend, but I had somebody to tell me that a while ago, like the reason why they didn't do for my child, like they did for other people's child is because they knew I got it. They knew I could handle it. And even down to when it come down to one of my children's fathers, <laughs> y'all got three to pick. So I ain't gonna say who. <laughs> <laughs> he was just saying that, but he said that he doesn't do what he's supposed to do as a dad because he knows that I'm mm -hmm. going to take care of it. And I feel like that that's, it's always been so hard for me to step into my feminine energy instead of being more masculine because I feel like everybody always looked at me as like, Oh, she got it. Mm -hmm. She got it. And that's how I carried it. Like I'm a warrior, you know, I got it. And I'm not saying that I'm not that, but I feel like now I'm, I want to be, I just want to be, I want to be catered to mm -hmm. a lot of the time we are that because we have to be that. Like you yeah. think I want to be all that. I don't no. want to be hard like that. Mm -mm. That's too much. So, yeah. So, <laughs> I definitely, you know, and that's something that I, um, I've been thinking about that a lot lately too, because I feel like, you know, you know, the type of life that I want to live as far as being good, you know, financially, just good all around. Mm -hmm. And I feel like nobody's going to give me that but me. And that kind of makes me. Mm, it, that's because it's the truth. And I don't like that. Yeah. I don't. I want to be soft and taken care of. Like, I, just, I, mean, I mean, and it can happen to a, to a degree, mm -hmm. you know, but <laughs> to the depths of how you want it done. Mm -mm. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to have to bring that thing in. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and, and I feel like I always had to be hard and just all my life. I just, I'm just always looked at as I got it and it's, I don't stop having it. I bet you it'll, it'll change. <laughs> I need to stop having it for real, but I feel like it's so far gone now. It, it's, I mean, that's how it feels, you know, what yeah. I'm saying? but it's never too far gone. Yeah. Change is just, it's change. Yeah. It changes. You know what I'm saying? It, it's yeah. there for, it changes for a reason. Like, yeah, shit can change. I, I, it's just, I guess it seems like I never have the, I would never have the ability to be down and out because I feel like so much is dependent upon me Yeah, that, other people ain't going to take care of if it's not me taking care of it. But just know that you are only obligated to take care of what is directly affecting you. Mm -hmm. And My once piece. you know that, yeah, or whatever whatever that may be. Yeah. And just know that that's your only obligation. You don't have to extend yourself any further than that. Yeah. And don't feel bad about not extending yourself further mm -hmm. than that. Like, that's the that's the thing. When you don't extend yourself to people that expect you to send yourself, extend yourself to them, then there you go feeling bad, especially if you're an empath. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like like us. Because then you'll be like, okay, I already know how they feel. I know they're upset. And, yeah. you know, that's a lot to yeah. deal with. So instead of doing all that, yeah, I just can't even hang you around. Yeah. And that's where I feel like I'm at right now. Like, that's one of the biggest things that I learned during this whole shebang. Like, just trying to, well, I won't say the biggest thing, but that and the fact of that, um, I had to really like, I guess with my ego, I had to really put my ego to the side with certain things of like me not wanting to, I guess, display a certain point of myself to people. What you would consider a flaw. Yeah. Because even down to the podcast, that was something that, you know, you know how I felt about it, but that was something that was so hard for me. Yeah. Because even though people no like certain people know like duh y'all know that I have multiple baby daddies and multiple kids and I'm young you know but it's never something that I really wanted to talk about or go Just into depth put out there. Yeah, yeah because it's like mm, I don't want people to know that about me and then you hear people like even I was watching this podcast and the girl was like I would never date somebody that got three or more kids and you know that used to bother me because I'm like well, I got yeah. and what if I had to go date again you know not saying Right, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, hypothetically. Yeah. But um, see, it don't bother me only because I understand that everybody has their preference. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to date a man that got three kids. Yeah. But now it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me now because I'm like, I understand. Just like you said, I would not want to date somebody yeah, that got... I mean, got, I will, but you know. Yeah. But she was saying it because they got different baby daddies and stuff like that. And I guess I look at it from my point different because I don't care what my baby daddy's doing. Like, bye. Like, yeah. uh, you know, I don't yeah. care. Like, they have never... No, like anybody that they deal with never had a problem because I don't care. So it's like, 
it's just I feel like it's more so of yeah because you have to give so much of your time to multiple kids and then you got to deal with baby mamas and all this other stuff so I get it but it's not something that I wanted to put out there because I was ashamed of it so it felt so good to live in my truth and just not care what people yeah. say because people gonna have something to say they, all the time they are and especially on social media because the way that people are so quick to comment something negative when they don't even know you girl and then when you come from a small place like i'm from on the eastern shore mm-hmm. you know everybody know everything like i told you my life i feel like has already been broadcasted not because i put it on social media just because i come from a small place when you know something you know something and it's told you know what i'm yeah. saying so that is a ripple effect. And then I am very transparent, you know, with my life. So I do post certain things. Or I always have posted certain things about my relationships, about my kids, about me and my kids, dad, all of that. So I kind of welcome that in my own area, I guess, my yeah. own energy space. But I use my flaws to kind of, um, I guess, show people that it's not, everything ain't peaches and cream. And then some people, like my friend, Laquita, had told me, she was like, look, some people might assume that you got it all together because of what you post on social media. Meanwhile, I'm thinking... This shit, this ain't nothing. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, what do yeah. you mean? You might, they might think I got it all together. How? Because mm-hmm. I'm not up here crying? Like, life ain't bad. Like, you asked me the other day, like, do I ever just be down in the dumps? And I'm like, no. <laughs> like, no. I might have a day where I get up and just it just don't feel like I want to be skipping. Yeah. But to really have a sad day, I have not had a sad day in, yeah. like, some years. Yeah. And that's why when you said that, appreciate the sad days because it makes the happy days that much brighter. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I learned that with reading. That's why I touch you duality because it's like, yeah, it's like you is, you know, just you always just you always said it just is like that. It just is mm-hmm. like that's just how life is. Every day is not going to be a happy day because guess what? If every day was a happy day, you wouldn't know like you wouldn't yeah, what, appreciate it would just be normal to you. Yeah. So yeah. it's like just, you know, everything, I guess it's just more so of how you handle when things aren't going as expected or what you expect mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, so we're about to wrap it up, but I do want to ask something as far as I know that's a lot that's trending on like social media now when it comes to manifestation. How do you recommend or how do you feel like people should you know actually manifest something positive because you can manifest negative too but manifest something in a positive way and because for me let me tell you before you answer let me tell you with me i feel like before when people talk about manifesting they say you really have to believe it that is yours that was something hard for me because i'm like how can i believe something mine and it's not here like Mm -hmm. or how can i be grateful for something that has not came yet I didn't know how to do that. I always question, like, I can't do it until it just, like, yeah, just happened. Okay, so let me ask you this, though. But have you always been a planner? Yeah. Okay, that may be why it's hard for you. For me, manifestation and, like, learning that came easy because, you know, I've been a very spontaneous person. So, to me, it's like, okay, if I want something and I, if it's something that I know I want and I can see myself having it or whatever the case may be, then just in my heart of hearts, I just feel like I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go get yeah. what I want to do. I'm very, I don't want to say strong-willed because sometimes I, I would say I am strong-willed. I change my mind fast, though. I don't have a problem changing my motherfucking mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, rule number one to manifestation for me is do not try to manifest out of desperation because mm-hmm. I have been there when I feel like I don't have nothing else and all I can do is try to, all right, now I'm, I'm desperate now. I need money or I need some peace or whatever the case may be. So now I want to write my journal 15 times a day. Yeah. No, no. Cause you don't first even believe it. You are just trying to hurry up and make it come yeah. to you. So what I had to do to believe it was to put myself in that place. If I wanted to believe I had peace, I had to create peace around me. Mm-hmm. If I wanted to believe I had money, I had to go get some motherfucking money. Yeah. Like, you know, really like I had to go find ways to make money. And then as soon as I started opening myself to find ways to make money or, um, even jobs or clientele, whatever the case may be, it just started coming to me. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So overall, when it comes to manifestation, though, I will say that, yes, believing is the number one ingredient. However, it's the follow through that is so important because I can believe all day that I'm going to be a millionaire. But if every day I wake up and the only thing I do is believe I'm going to be a millionaire, 
I'm not going to get far. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I have to believe that I'm going to be a millionaire, mm-hmm. put myself in that millionaire mindset, and do the work that a millionaire would do. Mm-hmm. So, And I've, I've been seeing, like, online with, you know, Feel, Feel Good Life, which I've let you watch mm-hmm. his lives before. He was saying that you have to be on the same frequency mm-hmm. as whatever you're trying to manifest. And... That's something that I didn't understand before, but now I understand it. Like, even now to my car, like, yeah, I want a new car, but appreciate the car that you have mm-hmm. now. Keep the car that you have now clean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, different things like that so you can get to where you're trying to go. I feel like with me, what was so hard for me was manifesting out of desperation because I wanted something so bad. I always was like a hustler. Like I'm going to go out here and do this, that, and the third and more so stress over how things is going to come. And I feel like that was my problem. Yeah. You do have to go get it, but I feel like it's also important to not chase it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. walk with it a little bit, you know, yeah. hand in hand, side by side. Like, yeah. don't take it by the wrist and drag it. Yeah, <laughs> because, like, for example, even when I mentioned with with the necklace with my dad, I had said in my mind that I wanted mm-hmm. a necklace. And, but if I feel like if I would have went to, prior to him actually getting that necklace, if I would have went to him like, Daddy, please, please, please buy me a necklace, it probably wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I thought it and I just let it go, it just came to me, honestly, and I feel like that's the hardest thing for me because y'all, I want a million dollars. I was gonna say, be careful just... and be intentional though about how you ask for it because when I tell you, I was working at the bridge and I was working shift work, crazy shifts, and I will always say, I want to work a job where I'm working eight to four and I'm gonna wear scrubs every day and I'm gonna be able to get my daughter on the bus mm-hmm. and all this and that and the third. And it happened, but it took for me to lose my job unexpectedly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It took yeah. for me to go travel an hour. Or maybe I want to have more to work every day for that to mm-hmm. happen. You know what I'm saying? So it happened, but it wasn't exactly how I pictured it to be. So when it does happen, you have to be willing to receive it, even if it's not exactly how you planned it to be, because your plan is not always the plan. So do you feel like that if you would have manifested it and was intention intentional about exactly like what have you said? Okay, I don't want to have to. I don't want a job where I have to travel far. I don't want a job to where I don't. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to just lose my job. I want to be able to willingly walk away from my job. You know, do you feel like that you should do it that way? Like, be specific with how you want it? Yes, but it goes back to mindset. I didn't realize at the time that I was even manifesting. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, when I was doing it, I was doing it more so because I was tired of where I was, but I didn't have the courage to up and leave because I was secure in my job. You know, I could feed my daughter. I had money. I had a, the best job on the Eastern Shore yeah. at the time. You know what I'm saying? So why would I leave that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The only re- only thing that was holding me back was fear. Yeah. And that was the same thing with my job, girl. I talked so bad about that job. Well, you know, and I got fired in a bad way. Bad, bad, girl, me bad too. Way. I told you. Bad way. <laughs> I got fired in a bad way. And it's not even funny. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <Y'all. Is> that... <laughs> anyway, a bad way. If you are easy with scripting like me, I'm a very good writer. I love to write. I'll write over speaking any day. But if you um use the 369 method, the 333, if you're not sure about the 369 method or the um 333 method, um, please Google it. The 333 method, I have used that one and I've seen that work. That is where you write out whatever you want to manifest 33 times, three times a day for 30 days. Or some people do 33 days, 33 days, excuse me. Um, I did 30 days and I definitely received what I was trying to manifest. However, <laughs> I should have been real intentional, y'all, because look, it was not exact, but it served its purpose. So... I guess that's where I'd be confused at because the book that I, one book I was reading called Manifest Now, it said that write out a hundred times, I think it said like for a week or something, what you're trying to manifest. But my thing is, it's like, isn't that kind of like being Begging. desperate for it? Yeah. So I feel like um, writing has its own connection to the ethos. I feel like, so when you pick your thought and you deliver that through your arm, like mm-hmm. you sending that energy from your brain through your hand to pen and paper, like it makes it live. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, it's making it live without you pretty much begging for it. It's you pitting it 
you putting it to life. Yeah. Isn't that like a scripture or something? Write it out, make it plain or something? It may be. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like um, down to my cars. I mean, my first Honda Accord, I never forgot. I wanted a Honda Accord so bad, girl. Mm-hmm. And I had me that 2008 Honda Accord. And that's one of the first things I had manifested. And that was before I even really got into spirituality yeah. like that. So for people that get into spirituality because it's trending. I'm not going to say you a bad person, honey, because it will work in your favor, but just know what you're getting into because yeah. once you start getting into the nooks and crannies and the shadow work and, and, it and ain't, honey, the self-discovery is a whole nother Yes, level. it's not a good feeling. I'm, I mean, I won't say it's a good feeling. Maybe it's a good feeling when you get out of it, but when you're going through it, it's not a good feeling. I mean, so many days I wake up just or go to sleep wanting to just cry and it's like just realizing why, you know, just. Oh, and you know what? Another way about manifesting. Sorry. Um, go ahead. Say if you want something, go in and make a mock purchase of it. You know what mm. I'm saying? Say if I want um, a hundred dollar pack of crayons, but I can only afford Crayola right now. I'm going to go and buy the Crayola and I'm going to color the hell out of, of a picture. You know what mm. I'm saying? And I'm going to just imagine me coloring it with those hundred dollar crayons. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. honestly, that's I know I'm going to get my dream car. I know for a fact because even when I'm driving in my car now where the air will only work on two, I can <laughs> just let <that> enough. <laughs> I'll be so happy. I'll be so happy. Yeah. Like I'll be like, I can't wait until I'm driving down the road, sunroof open, okay? Like, I can just feel it. And if it doesn't feel make-believe in my head because it feels real, even to the point where I could be in the car with myself smiling mm-hmm. just in the thought Because of, it is real, honey. Yeah, like, it's on the way. It's on I the can't way. wait, girl. Even down to, like, creating peaceful days, like, you don't ever just sit back. Okay, when you have it a Saturday next time, mm-hmm. sit back and just imagine yourself in a field full of sunflowers or daisies, whatever kind of flowers you like. And just imagine you just with a dress on, just with no cares in the world, <laughs> just being so free. And mm-hmm. it, it feels good. And you know what? Honestly, I feel like a lot of my days of where I feel sad, it's, it seems to always be days to where I'm just in the house. Because I don't like being in the house all the time. Like, this past weekend, I literally parked my car Friday and didn't leave until Monday morning mm. or something. And I don't like that. I don't like... Are you the type of person that got to go somewhere, whether it's even to a store, somewhere? Like, I've learned this about myself. I used to think that I was the type that always wanted to be going, going, going. Mm-hmm. But I am. I yeah. am still. But I do like my time at home. But I, I like, like to it, be home all alone. The t- oh, I wasn't alone. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be home alone. Yeah, I wasn't alone. I was very much bothered. <laughs> So maybe that's why. Yeah, maybe if so. I could just be at home and just watch what I want to watch, do what I want to do, eat what I want to eat, don't have to worry about nobody asking. You know what I'm saying, baby? That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Because. That makes sense. As we know, we have not had our alone time as adults, as adults ever. So for no. me to have that, like when my kids are on the shore with their dad, honey, I walk through the house naked. Well, I walk through naked when they're there, but mm-hmm. I walk through the house naked. Mm-hmm. I blast my music. I smoke my weed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have fun. Yeah, we're not a caring world. You know, I don't watch TV. So what do I be doing? Nothing but enjoying my own. Company. I don't see how you don't watch TV because I'm like <laughs> nothing but enjoying my company, y'all. She do not look, y'all. And when we went somewhere and she, it was a TV in there. It was like, you have you ever been somewhere to where it's like music playing and they got a video playing, but the video don't match the word. They just got a plan. <laughs> she was all into it, like. I'm like, Ashley, what are you looking at? Like <laughs> Making up my own scenario, honey. <laughs> I told you I don't even watch videos on social media with the sound on sometimes. I just watch it and just put together what I think might be going on. That's I don't know crazy. why I'm like that. It might, I'm selfish, maybe. Why? Why Tonight, do you think it's selfish? I feel like to a degree it has to be selfishness because think about some of the things I say sometimes. I don't really like paying attention to other people's like books and stuff. Like mm-hmm. stuff that I feel like I know or... I think I just re- rather rely on my own understanding or my own feelings and stuff. Or maybe I just become so comfortable relying on my own self that I don't really care to like hear what other people really think. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that's why I say like for me to care, I care about you even. I yeah. care about you. I care about your opinion. Like I care about all of that. So like it's just nice. <laughs> yeah, because I don't be caring. <laughs> I'm, I'm su- it's surprising for me to hear you say that you don't care, especially with your job that you do. Like, Girl. always listening to other people's problems. I mean, well, and maybe that's why. Because I you- can't care. I mean, I can care in the moment, but 
when them, when the readings are over, I ask source, please take whatever was put on me off of me, please. Yeah. I have no desire to carry the energy around. I don't want to know. I don't want to think about this person later. Yeah. I don't know. So do it ever? Um, did you have to start asking for him not to do that because it was like weighing you down? It was getting heavy. Yes, yes. Mm. I don't know. It was this weekend. One weekend in particular, I made like eight hundred dollars, girl, doing readings. But do you know about that Monday? Like I had to stay in the bed for like two days. Really? Yeah. Because it was too it was, much. Yeah. It was just too much. Yeah. I was. I just felt like I had just got beat up. Like yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah. Because our own problems be enough. Okay. Like, and then you got to deal with other people's yes. shit. Yes. And then, you know, I say all the time, I don't ever have no problems because I feel like I don't have problems. Yeah. But on the level of problems that I deal with other people's stuff, I don't have them. So that's yeah. what makes me feel like, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I would not complain. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Especially when you get to see what other people is going through. It really make you appreciate mm-hmm. the little problems that you have. You be like, okay, my shit ain't that bad. Like, mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I like this conversation. I feel like it'll help people look at you know, like one tarot differently, two to have their own spiritual journey as far as like figuring out how they feel inside instead of relying on everything that has been told around them. Um, and just, you know, array of different things. I know we talked about different things, y'all. We was kind of we but this is how our conversations be like. It literally we start with one thing and we be all the way over here. Really? I don't know how to- and every time you say something about tarot, I feel like I never answer the question still because I feel like I had something to say. <laughs> What? Sorry. About tarot. Okay, so, I was wondering. Remember, the question I asked you was with the cards. Like, how does the cards pop out and stuff right. like that? So, I feel like being that everything is energy, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And I'm, at this point when I'm doing a reading, I'm asking Source to deliver me certain information, right? Yeah. So, when the, the message is time to be delivered, I feel like that's when the cards should be flipped out. And that's why I don't pull cards mm-hmm. when I read. Like, I, I never shuffle and just lay the cards out. Like, here you go, here you go, here yeah. you go. I feel like what's meant for you will jump out on its own. Um, And, and then when I read... Out. I read intuitively first, so I'll tell you what I hear first, what I see first, what I smell, whatever, you know, first, yeah. and then give you my interpretation of the card. Yeah, because, y- y'all, it's even to the point where some- if something is aching on my body, she can feel it. Mm-hmm. Like, she'll be like, was your wrist hurting, or did was you gassy? And I'll be like, yeah, girl. <laughs> yeah. I've been pooing all day. <laughs> yeah. So, like, girl, you messed me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or, yeah, like, for real, that's really, like, I remember one reading we had, you was like, do you always mess with his ears? And I'd be like, yeah, that's mm-hmm. the, that's my thing. Like, I always mess with his ears all the time. So, it's crazy how, I don't think I would ever be on that level. Honestly, I don't want to be on that level because uh, I don't want to get other people. <laughs> it's, see, it's, it's weird being on that level sometimes because people put expectations on me. And I don't mm-hmm. like that because somebody could go, because I have had a couple readings where I have channeled messages from people on the other side. Mm-hmm. But that's not something that I'm ready and willing to do all the time. Mm-hmm. Like I don't offer mediumship readings because I don't want to summon dead spirits. Yeah. So that's not what I want to do. Yeah. Um, but somebody will go and tell the next person, Yeah, she gave me a message from my grandma girl. And yeah. you know, this and that. And they come to me like, Girl, what you got for me? My grandma died yeah. five minutes ago. Tell me what she like, baby. True story. <laughs> True story. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, this conversation <laughs> has been long, long, long. All right, y'all. So, y'all know the last segment that I do is where I read y'all something that I read this week that um is in relation to a topic that we talked about or, you know, this conversation. So, let me get to it cuz y'all, I was not prepared today even though <laughs> I know what it was that I wanted to read, but I really wasn't prepared. Hold on. All right, so this is from the book, The Power of Now. Only you can do this. Nobody can do it for you. But if you are fortunate enough to find someone who is intensely conscious, if you can be with them and join them in the state of presence, that can be helpful and will accelerate things. In this way, your own light will quickly grow stronger. When a log that has only just started to burn is placed next to one that is burning fiercely, and after a while they are separated again, the first log will be burning with much greater intensity. After all, it is the same fire. And I felt like that was with us, y'all. Aww. Because I just feel like she was just yeah. blaming. And then I, I was, she just lit me. So I appreciate you having this we conversation. We lit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I 
appreciate you having this conversation you with are my so girl. welcome i hope i i hope she gave insight to somebody has as she be doing me because all the time i just be like yeah and i'll be all over the place y'all so yeah run it back if you need to <laughs> <laughs> well, our conversations be all over the place anyway we'll literally send each other just different topics text after text after text yes. and we just know like let me just go ahead and text this now and i know she'll get back with me whenever she get mm-hmm. back with me and i feel like i just want to say i feel like that's something that i love about our friendship is that we don't we're not like we're not hard on each other. We, we don't know. put a lot of expectations yeah. on each other because yeah. we don't have to. Like yeah. you know, what I'm saying? It's, it's no. But you mean. know how like you might have friendships where you be like, oh, this this girl ain't text me back. I'm like, yeah, but you know what? That has a lot to do with growth, and yeah. that's why if maybe if if you were like that in the past, mm-hmm. like I probably couldn't. We probably couldn't be like that yeah. because that is what got me away from being like that. The friends that I used to have would mm-hmm. be so you didn't text me back. You didn't. didn't, didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm like, busy. Yeah, like yeah. you know, and I never have to say that to you. So yes, it, it, yeah. it means a lot. I just because yeah. shit, I be busy. Okay, oh, thanks. <laughs> yes, it's like when you have stuff going on, you know what I'm saying. And and that's honestly, that's why this. I promise this. We about to wrap it up, y'all. <laughs> but honestly, when I was listening to something before, he was saying that if you're trying to get to a, a place in life where you're like successful and you have so much going on, appreciate where you're at right now because you eventually you might not be able to talk to the people you want to talk to mm-hmm. all the time. And I feel like that's why I, you know, I just appreciate the time I have now as far as talking to you, because I feel like maybe one day I won't be able to talk to you all the time. Like Cause we to, both going to be yes, busy. Yes, okay. You, be, you have your warehouse stuff in stores. You're like, girl, well, you ain't going to be making no products. Then you're going to be having, okay. People made that Somebody for you. Kids in the shop. <laughs> okay. But y'all make sure y'all shop with grounded essentials. Make sure y'all yes. check out her podcast called swim. S W Y M. That's right. Say what you mean. Baby. Yes. On, available on all platforms. And That's it, y'all. We'll see you next. Well, I'll see you next Friday. Bye.